Good ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at the cost of repeating what Pinaki just mentioned uh, slightly differently, I think the two toughest sessions are the pre-lunch and the post-lunch session. And I have been tasked to keep you engaged for another 15 odd minutes. So I hope what I have to share with you will uh, keep you interested. So before I begin, uh, can I request with a show of hands how many uh, participants here are aware of something called as PCI DSS? Well, that's good. I think about 40%. And uh, how many entities who are attending here today are actually going about implementing this PCI DSS in their environment? Okay, little less, but good, at least we have a few. So that's what I'm going to be covering in the short time. Uh, we're going to look at the threat landscape, the payment ecosystem, something which you all are quite aware of, an overview of PCI DSS and why it has suddenly gained importance because it's been around for a while and what has been HDFC Bank's approach towards the PCI DSS compliance. If I look at the threat landscape today, uh, we've all been seeing for the last 12 to 18 months quite regularly newspaper reports that certain individuals have got fished. The word phishing has gained prominence. You would be having your respective IT and information security teams who would be running you through these reports, the analysis, the impact as far as your entity is concerned. These are some of the names which you may identify with. The most recent being Target. Now this retailer was very recently hit with a scam and uh, you have Neiman Marcus, you have Harbor Freight, you have Macpo Express. You may wonder why we don't see any Indian names here, although they have been hit. The reason being that it doesn't get reported openly as yet. So while there are retailers, maybe some of them may be here in this room who have got hit in a small way, but nonetheless, unless it's officially out, we can't show those names here. And what has happened with them? These names that you see, Jack Poss, Dexter, Chewbacca. Now Chewbacca, if you are a sci-fi fan, I, I am one. So in Star Wars, there was this animated creature called Chewbacca who, who was a crazy guy who used to go do things on his own. So there is this uh, Trojan, if I may use the word. It's a malicious executable, all of them, the Postram Trojan. And what exactly do they do? So just in the previous uh, presentation, Pinaki had mentioned that, you know, uh, the, the entire outlook looks positive. Well, if you ask me, while I am from the financial domain and I am working with the bank in the information security group, I'll say it's not very positive, it's a little bit grim. Reason being that most of the payment ecosystem today is vulnerable. We may be, we may be saying that uh, you know, we've got a fantastic growth rate, we've got retail taking over big time, we've got people getting snapped up at unheard of prices in billions of dollars. But at the same time, we need to understand that what is it that we are trying to achieve at the end of the day? What Pinaki brought out was, show me the money. And while you may be wanting to do it for all the right reasons, there are people out there who are leveraging technology for the wrong reasons. Now, a very simple case, which I will take you through when I take you through the payment ecosystem slide, would be that you have your end customer, then there's you, and then there is either a bank or a service provider who's facilitating the entire payment chain. And how it gets exploited is what we need to look at. This particular slide is of absolute relevance today in the Indian retail scenario. Now, if you look at it, most of you will identify with it that at the point of sale system, that's where the money starts ringing in. When you give an option to the customer to pay by card, you may be having your own MIS systems running, you may be having your own payment and billing systems running. Some of you have it in-house, some of you have it provided by a third party. Now, most of them, barring a few, will be following what is mentioned on the top portion. That is, when I pay with my card, the person swipes it on that EDC machine, the electronic data capture machine. What does it do? It picks up all the information in my card. Now, while you may be doing your due diligence when you are you know, going out and buying that device or outsourcing this to somebody, that device is like a piece of rock. Nobody can do anything to it. Nobody can skim it, nobody can take out data from it. If somebody tries to tamper with it, it will lock itself up. Where is the problem? The problem is that there is a second swipe which happens today in most of our environments. Why? Because obviously you would like to know what is the trend amongst the customers, what do they like, what is their spending pattern, what do they prefer at what point of time. If you have any seasonal patterns, you have any patterns with respect to festivals, 
All this information you capture through these spend patterns which you pick up basis whatever payment has been made through card. Now mind you, when I'm saying card is, I agree is maybe a small percentage of the overall method in which the customer pays money for what he's buying, but it is very vulnerable. What exactly needs to be done, and this is catching 